So yeah, um, this wasn't a video I planned to make at all. I actually didn't plan to, yeah, well I planned to make it, but I didn't plan to make it like this. Uh, the original idea was about overhead lines and, you know, being on the track without, you know, west and all that. Uh, I figured, you know, that was, that was boring as fuck. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so now it's about brake power and trains. Yes, hello and welcome to the third installment of the train series we're doing here on the channel, Scandinavian Exploring. Today, as you can see, I'm outside. I'm in a rail area. Uh, I cannot invite you. I have to be in frame. Today, I've made the choice to talk about brake distance because apparently that's a thing that people don't understand with trains. We are going to talk about the different brake types, the brake modes, and a bit about distance and how to calculate it and all that. So what you're seeing right now is an older type of brake. These are made of iron. Uh, today these are made of composite, some two type composite. I don't know which kind of composite it is, um, but that kind of eliminates the whole more heat, less friction thing. Of course, in the older days, uh, you started with vacuum brakes. Vacuum brakes was when you added a vacuum behind the brakes to pull them away and then you remove the vacuum uh, to you know get them to charge the, the actual wheels here now we use air uh, and hydraulics actually uh, too that's not as common not here anyways but it, it's a thing so of course i have to mention that they exist and they work just as your car so they, they're very efficient uh, while air is slow to move and that's actually what makes me want to talk about the next thing so here we see an another type of brake mode changing that i'm used to uh, this is for a freight train you can see it has purse t which means passenger train and on the other side which you can't see uh, not that good anyways it says gus t which means freight train if you're going with passengers you need a fast brake with a lot of power. That is not featured here. It's called R. That's what we use today. An R brake is a fast and very powerful brake that almost works instantly as soon as you change the amount of air in the brake line. Here we have P and G. Uh, those switches are commonly known as RPG switches because the change between the R, the P and the G mode. Now here you see the P and the G. The P is kind of slow. It takes a long time for it to work, but it works immensely powerful when you need it. Because which is freight trains, the G, it will not apply the braking power on any of these wagons there is in that consist until every part of the braking system in all the wagons in that consist has the same amount of air in them. So your whole train doesn't break one wagon at a time, which is, you know, the normally how it's done. They all break at the same amount, so it doesn't have a lot of wagons, a lot of weight that pushes you in the back as you try to break. So brake distance on a train, how did that even work? Well, as I told you before, when we apply the brake and air pressure changes. And the different modes tells how much that is going to happen or when it's going to happen. Now, um, when you are in a train and you are making it ready to drive, you have to use something that is called a brake percentage. A brake percentage is you telling the train how much efficiency does this brake have. It changes the curve. So when you have the brake, you like have a curve that the train automatically, uh, you know, figures out. Uh, but it, it's how uh, much power you, the train can have and how much braking force you can have. Now, before I show you a clip uh, with one of the wagons that I'm mostly for you, uh, How do, how do we get above 100? Well, 
a hundred percent on trains here in Denmark. I don't know how it is in other countries. I, I, it might be the same. Um, I know it's European, so that that's the thing. Uh, if you have a brake per chain that's on 155, uh, that means that you have 1.5 times. The kind of brakes you use actually also determines on your brake percentage. If you use R on a passenger train, like I told you before, you will have a brake percentage that is a lot higher than if you use P. Uh, it depends, but that's because when you use R, you can use the magnetic brake that is on, on passenger trains as well, I can show you in a moment. That will be calculated, not here, but Germany, calculators in which often give them a brake percentage at, at over 200 percent so here you see the magnetic wheel brake it's a piece of iron that you magnetize most uh, emus uh, can use them in everyday braking uh, you can turn it on yourself or you can rely on it being used when you full brake so they have a lot more braking power than a locomotive driven uh, consist has